All right, I have it in my hands now. The Jabra Evolve 285, and I've been waiting for a long time. Before Jabra came out with these new Evolve 2 products, we're then to do updates on their older products. And I have to say, out of all their newer ones, the Evolve 2 series, this is the only one that makes me feel how I started this video. And that's just the way it goes, really, when it comes to products. You're never gonna find anything perfect or anything. There's always gonna be some things you don't like, but this one really has me stuck in the middle on things. So this is Adam, let's get into the review, and I hope this helps. So for starters, let's get into a microphone test, especially since it has this really fancy, super futuristic looking boom arm. And then after that, I will give my thoughts on how I thought it performed, on actual calls and just using it day to day for two weeks, every single day actually for two weeks. And then I'll give my input on what I think is better wired or Bluetooth. <laughs> Okay, so this is testing the Jabra Evolve 285 wired in that same ambient coffee shop noise. I think the decibels are about 80, maybe to 90, so it's really loud in here. Okay, in the same coffee shop, now we're testing the Evolve 285 with the Bluetooth dongle. Uh, same decibel level, same volume and everything in the coffee shop, so let's see how this sounds. All right, just to see if there's a major, major difference, I'm gonna do an Evolve 285 mic test on my phone now with the voice recorder on my phone to see if that Bluetooth connection makes a difference in the microphone quality. Okay, so now we're gonna test out the microphones of the Evolve 285 with the boom arm up. Phone test, this is just in my quiet office, so no ambient noise whatsoever. I mean, at most I have my window open, so there's a little bit of noise outside. And I'll do a type test just to see if anything ends up picking up right now. So type, type, type. <laughs> Let's see how that ends up sounding. So if we're talking just microphone quality for phone calls, the Evolve 265 is going to be the best headset they came out with strictly for sounding good to the other person. But how does the music sound? How does the sound quality of this headset perform? For me, I think it performs, just in my opinion, I know some people might think this is crazy, but just as good as the XM4s from Sony. And I only say that because if you care about bass, if you care about the low end of how a headset sounds, this is the headset to go to. Although there is equalizer settings and things like that you can play with that I'll mention later in the app, I think it really sounds like that. It really competes with that. Now, the only issue with that is it's not going to get as loud but how the music sounds, how hip hop sounds, how rock sounds, the detail and the clarity, really reminds me of that headset. Now, in my opinion, Bose and Sennheiser do much better than Sony. There's too much, it's too heavy on the lows. But I just wanted to throw that out there as the best example I can think of just to keep it simple. So the sound quality is gonna be good enough to where you feel like you didn't waste your money no matter what music you're listening to, especially since you can equalize the music. Now. Going back with ANC, the ANC, I think their biggest flaw is more a hardware thing than software or anything. I know I want to hope for software updates for this for the ANC to get better. They've done that before with the Elite 75Ts where they added ANC to that. So hopefully they can, but I'm just crossing my fingers that that's the issue and not hardware, but we'll see. All right, now when we get into the design of these, I mean, look how big... <laughs> Look how chunky that headband is. This is something where, I mean, they are over the ear headphones. I get it, but still, I think they could have slimmed it down a little bit with just a headband. That's the goofiest part because when I put them on, and yes, they are comfortable with glasses, luckily, because I've used them for about three hours straight before I had head fatigue. I can't really say ear fatigue because they don't press on my ears at all just being over the ear, but the way they're slanted on the inside. So besides that minor complaint, I mean, how it performs though, and when you're wearing it for a long period of time, I mean, we're talking three hours with glasses on, and it took that long before I was like, okay, I think I need a quick few minute break, which is pretty impressive, because I have music headphones that I can barely wear that long before needing a break. So that's just me when it comes to how it looks. Now, as far as the boom mic, there is one more thing I wanna say is, it's awesome, it's super discreet, it's, I love it. I wish more companies did something like this instead of it just being obvious it's a, it's a calling headset or whatever with a boom arm, is it's really close to your mouth, as you can see. So I don't know if that's gonna fit everybody's head or everybody's face or whatever. I mean, like for example, if you have a really huge beard, I mean, imagine trying to, <laughs> imagine trying to comb over with that. You know, I'm just, 
I know that's a funny joke, but like, think about it. I don't know if this is going to be fit or a perfect fit for everybody, but hey, it is what it is. You know, it's, it's a con, it's a pro. It just really depends, you know, on you're not going to know until you actually use this headset. So let's get into the functionality and the buttons of how this headset works on the left and right ear cups. So you have your busy lights on both, but on the left side with three button home button here, the main one, it's A and C and hear through. And then you have your charging pins if you have a uh, setup for that, if you have a charging stand, your power on Bluetooth connect button, your USB-C, your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And then you also have on the right side, the volume up is gonna be volume up and volume down. Play pause in the middle. <laughs> and then you have, if you hold, you could restart or previous track for the volume down. If you hold for the volume up, it's gonna be the next track. And then of course your busy light indicator as well on this. Answering and ending a call is gonna be the center button on the right ear cup. And then the mute button or unmute is gonna be by flipping the boom arm up or pressing the button on the boom arm. So no issues on the controls or anything. And then of course with the Jabra app, I like how they have the equalizer, how they have the soundscapes, the white noise, the pink noise, the fan, and like all these things if you really need the focus. That's dope, that's built in. If it wasn't for the equalizer, I wouldn't have liked the sound quality as much because there's just certain times I want it just to be flat or I wanna to tone down the bass, that's just me, depending on the music I'm listening to or what I'm listening to. And with all the controls, I really just don't have any complaints as far as how to use this thing, except for wanting this to cycle through A and C off and then hear through. And that includes also using it on my MacBook. I didn't notice any issues with the application there either. Now, when it comes to some flaws here, one major flaw for me was needing to have this thing charged before I could even use it wired. For me personally, you can use it, you can use the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack for listening to stuff without it being charged or turned on. But why do I gotta turn it on to use it via USB-C, the wired connection? I mean, is it just me? Am I missing something here? But I haven't been able to figure it out. I tried multiple times. I had all my software updated and it just will not work if it's turned off and you wanna use it wired. That's pretty frustrating because if your headphone dies, you wanna be able to use the microphone and you can't use the microphone with just using a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So that's a major con for me personally. And then of course there was the using the dongle and having a multi-point connect that way with my computer and my smartphone. That could be very minor for you, but for me it's just, it's just a little inconvenience. But overall I will say the biggest flaw is just the price of this headset compared to what I thought I was gonna get. Is it's not my favorite for calls, but it is my favorite for just overall usage. So it's really frustrating because if I had to pick any of their new headsets, any of Jabra's new ones, for just phone calls, it'd be the Vol 265. If I had to pick any one period, it would be this one. But this one's not worth the price for that fancy boom arm microphone. It just, I don't know what they messed up on. And so it's just one of those things where it's leading me down the path of being like, all right, is this headset worth it for the price? And for me, it's not because of this simple factor, the boom arm quality of the microphone. I just am thinking, all right, for the price I'm paying, why is the Evolve 265 such a better performance in call experience with less features than this is for a higher price and more features? You know, sometimes I'm just thinking, man, this is such an awesome innovation, but I just, I'm not understanding why it doesn't sound as good, you know? And so that's why I'm kind of frustrated and why I just want to recommend it. If we're talking, if call quality experience matters, where you're like, I don't need A and C, then the Evolve 265, best Bluetooth headset I've ever used. In my opinion, out of anything Jabra has come out with. It, it's hard to start comparing all kinds of different headsets because that's, I'm gonna have to do a whole video on that. And I still have to try to poly Voyager Focus 2 before I even really give my opinion on best Bluetooth headset ever. But as far as all Jabra products, I don't think this is worth it for a call quality. It's only worth it if you just want one headset. If you don't have Sony headphones, if you don't have Bose, if you don't have Apple AirPods Max, then yes, I would recommend this then. If you're looking for just, hey, I, I do a lot of work, I need good sounding music, this and that, then definitely go with this because the microphone isn't that bad to say, this isn't the only headset you should get. So that's my take. 
If you're looking for just one pair of headphones that does it all, just get this. Don't worry about Bose and Sony and buying anything else. Then it's worth the money. So I hope that really nailed it and just kind of put it into perspective in my experience of trying so many things. So at the end of the day, hopefully that helped. I really appreciate you watching this. Maybe I should have got the tan one. Maybe that would have made me feel a little bit differently because every time I see that tan one, I'm like, dang it, why'd I get this color? But anyhow, I truly hope this helped. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you on the next one.